how's it going? So for an upcoming project, I needed to build a synth voice, a relatively simple monophonic analog synth voice. And when I started to put it together, I figured why not document uh, bashing it together on the breadboard to figure out what this synth voice is going to do. Hopefully this might be of help to some people and it might for some people be a little bit of a push to give it a go yourself. Uh, it's right here. This is what it is right now. It's quite simple. It's got two oscillators. Um, it's got a noise circuit. It's got a filter. It's got an envelope generator and a VCA, all in this reasonably compact circuit that's over two breadboards. There's lots of wiggly bits there and a fair few knobs. I've been covering it for the past week over on Patreon, putting it together bit by bit. And the videos uh, kind of made sense to cut them down a bit more and turn them into a video in its own right. Uh, it's not that cut down, by the way, because this video is still about an hour and a half. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, you can watch it if you want. You don't have to watch it, it's up to you. I've cut it up into chapters that are below. It is a very bare bones analog synthesizer voice, but as you can tell, it doesn't sound that bad. It actually sounds pretty good. So I've, I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. This is the point where I decided to put this video up because it, uh, it kind of encompasses most of the things for a simple analog synth voice. I need to add a few more bits to this and I'll be doing that um, in the same kind of video format over on Patreon. This includes um, a voltage control over the FM input and things like that and also a delay and a sequencer uh, and that you'll probably see when I actually get the actual project built and put together in a video in a few weeks. But without further ado because this video is already going to be pretty long let's just get on with it. So the first thing we're going to put down onto the breadboard to make this synthesizer work is the oscillators. In this there are two oscillators. One is the normal oscillator, the one that sounds musical, a bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
bit neato beto. So this row is now connected to plus 12 volts. So let's work along. We're going to start by putting all of the uh, tracking circuitry. This is the stuff that uh, kind of makes sure that it, it's in tune. Uh, we've got a 24K resistor. So the, the resistor values aren't super important. You can mess around with these. Uh, sometimes you can get away with having these slightly out of the tolerance is slightly out of whack. So we've got a 24K. We're going to chop the legs off, make it nice and short actually, because we're going to try and put this up to, going to squeeze that into that row like so. And then we have, so we're going to cross that off. Then we've got this 10K uh, trim pot. Hopefully I've got a 10K trim pot. We're going to plop the trim pot over here. So uh, this resistor is in essence uh, connected to the last leg of the trim pot right there. And then this trim pot, both of the other legs need to connect together, bend it over. Sometimes tweezers are a good uh, tool to use for breadboards. If you've got stumpy fingers. Right, we've got that. And then it seems to go round and then connect to pin two via a um, 5.6K resistor. So if I've got a 5K6 resistor, I grab the 5K6, pin two over to the top pins of the trim pot. So that's uh, the 5K6. But then also it looks like it connects uh, to uh, straight to pin three. So it goes via the 10K straight over to pin three. Connect that to the end as well. There we go, that up there. Now we're going the 620R. So this goes over to minus 12 volts from over here. I'm gonna bring it over to down here, there. And then get over to the minus 12. So we've done uh, 620 ohms, minus 12 volts. The data sheet, it'll basically explain what's going on here. This is the temperature compensation side. So, so pin 14, we're gonna find a 1K8. So, oh, I have got a 1K8. I was about to get out a 2K because in reality, it probably wouldn't have made much of a difference, I don't think, in that situation. Um, so pin 14, 16, 15, 14, that goes to ground. So we've got from pin 14 to ground, boom. Uh, now we've got pin 13 and pin 12. Uh, so pin 12 actually goes directly to ground. You can see it takes a route over to ground. So we're going to do that first. Pin 12 to ground day. Eh? And then pin 13 connects to ground via 470 ohm resistors. Sometimes when you look at schematics, you also look at the root of it because it looks like it's uh, connected to pin 12 because it goes back on itself. But in reality, it's not connected to pin 12, just pin 12 and pin 13 by this resistor are connecting to ground. Same with uh, pin 11, the one nanofarad capacitor, because it's going up to this wire, uh, it's not connected to pin 12. Well, it is, but it's connected to ground. So focus on the ground, not the pin 12. This is pin 13, the 470 ohms. Okay, all right, that's that. And then we've got a 1.5 mega ohm, the big boy. That's connecting up to 12 volts from pin 13, which is actually, if you see, it goes over to this uh, top pin here. So we can actually cut this down and squeeze it on in there. Sorted, pin 12, boom. Right, one NF, one nanofarad uh, capacitor coming from pin 11. I'm just gonna use a ceramic one for this in the breadboard. I might upgrade it. So we got that one now, that's done. Let's go over to this circuitry. Pin 15 is where all of the, the inputs uh, go. So this is what mixes together and makes it controllable by voltages. You've got this, um, this uh, resistor going into a 10 nanofarad capacitor. So we start by getting this sorted. 10 nanofarad, so that's um, that, 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 and that. Now this is the CV in, so we've got 100K to the control voltage in, but we're gonna mainly focus on this uh, knob right here, which is 100K. So I'm gonna get a 100K potentiometer. I'm gonna solder uh, some wires to it. So we've got this, we're gonna stick this right here. The first wire 
is going to connect a 100k resistor coming from pin 15, all the voltages together. So we've got a um, 100k resistor. I connect this up to that 100k like so. And then we're also gonna get the other wire, as it says, to go to 12 volts, plus 12 happens to be, yet again, on pin 16, the top pin again. What we need to do now is we need to get the output sorted. So we've got the input, we've got the tracking part of the circuit, we've got all of the circuit, external circuitry to this Curtis chip to make it start ticking. We need to add a op-amp to it, plug in a TLO72, so we have a spare op-amp as well, because we're only gonna use one output waveform from this specific uh, oscillator in this specific module in the groove box. So what we need to do is we need to follow this part of the circuit here, TLO72, we need to wire in the plus 12 volts and the minus 12 volts first. Just so happens that I've got them, I might, it would have been better in hindsight to do this upside down, but you, you live and learn. You never know, some chips, some chips have the plus on one side, some of them have it on the other side. There is the minus 12 volts. I'm gonna cross that off. So uh, for this synthesizer, we're only gonna use this output, the ramp output, the saw wave. So pin eight is the output of it. And then it goes into the input of the op amp, uh, which basically then just goes straight through the op amp and out to the sawtooth wave, which basically acts as a buffer to make sure it still works. So this doesn't invert it or anything because we're using the non-inverting input of the op amp. So we've got the output of pin eight going into the non-inverting input of the operational amplifier. And then we need to put these two pins together, which is the non-inverting input and the output. And then it basically acts like a buffer then. It's really that simple. So now in theory, when we get a wire and we send that wire over to an output, so we get the wire um, to the output which is the top pin of the op amp. Plug that in there, get this and plug it into a jack socket. We're gonna use this jack socket right here. Oh! That's, that's mains hum, that's not the actual output because we also need to wire the sleeve, the ground of the uh, jack socket. This is basically just going straight to a hi-fi player like a crappy amp. With any luck, no smoke and we have life. Actually, it's not that bad at all. Anyway, we've got a really simple and dirty uh, voltage trackable oscillator here. So the next step is we're gonna have to bake this circuit exactly ex the same again over here. And we're gonna do that right now. Now we have two oscillators that are exactly the same. This is the first one. And this is the second one. Uh, they're both uh, functioning very similar. I haven't calibrated them at all yet. But the first thing that we're gonna do is figure out how to get both of these uh, coming out of the output at the same time. The best way of doing this is thinking about what we're gonna be doing in the design. In the design, we're gonna to need to make a mixer because in the actual circuit that I'm planning, there is a bunch of different audios. So we've got this oscillator, this oscillator, we've got the noise and also a separate external audio input. So the next thing to do is mix both of these signals together that are coming out of both of these oscillators. We've got another two knobs here. Uh, they're gonna go here and here respectively. Um, I think this one's actually going here. So we're gonna borrow this circuit from one of the modules that is up on my, uh, my website. Uh, the links are below to all these modules that we're using and things like that. Um, uh, this is just a, a simple mixer. All it is is two um, inverting operational amplifier circuits. Uh, so you mix it going into this one and then you send it back around to make it uh, the, the, the electronic signals around the right way. So we're gonna jump on to using another op amp right here. Uh, this is going to be for the mixer, so we're going to plop it in, plop it in here, and we're going to uh, quickly, uh, before we get any further, we're going to wire in the plus and minus 12 volts, the same as these ones, it's, it takes the same power, so the plus 12 volts is on pin 8, 
at the non-inverting inputs, the plus on both sides goes to ground. So pin three, one, two, three, over to ground. And then also the other side, we got pin five to ground. And then after that, we're gonna get some 100K resistors, because there's just an awful lot of 100Ks, uh, which is the non-inverting input of the op-amp to the output of the op-amp. And then we uh, do the same again to pins six and seven, which is the other op-amp, because the TLO72, which is the chip here, is a dual op-amp, so basically both sides are pretty much exactly the same. A 100K resistor, another 100K resistor, going from the output of this uh, op amp into the input, which is pin six of the other op amp. We can have as many inputs as we want really into this mixer. You just add a 100K, wire whatever you want into the 100K resistor. In this instance, we're gonna have two inputs from the oscillators. These are gonna be up here. And we get some wires. The input is on this side. So that wires into the input of the circuit. Then the amp output that wires over to the 100K that goes into the op amp is the middle leg. And then this leg on that side goes to ground. So when you twist it all the way, that way, it goes to ground, which means that no electrical signal goes into the mixer and it doesn't get mixed together. So this is the input. This is gonna wire into the output of the first oscillator. There we go. So the output goes along and connects over to that 100K resistor, which is over here. Goes to the input of the mixer, the top one. Now the next input, this wires into the, the output of the oscillator, number two. No, no, I've done it wrong. This middle leg is the output, what an idiot. The problem is if you have the input as the middle leg, uh, if you twist it to ground, that means that the, you will be basically sending the input straight to ground and depending on what you've got plugged into the input that could damage it, it could stop it from working temporarily or something. So you always want to keep the input via the 100k resistor that goes around the side to ground of the oscillator into the input of the mixer. What we're gonna do now and connect this output of this mixer to the jack socket. So tip of the jack socket, output of the mixer. We're gonna turn them up. Okay. Okay, we're in, we're in business. There we go. So we've got a mixer that successfully mixes both of the oscillator's signals together. So we have, now we have the mixer section. So we're gonna try and add a noise circuit down here, very simple noise circuit, and then we're gonna make that go into the mixer via another potentiometer down here. Send over to its very own input via a 100K resistor. Another 100K that goes into the op amp. Uh, so it mixes together with all of the other signals. If you put a smaller resistor in here, it makes that signal louder. If you put a larger resistor in here, it makes it quieter. So if you've got, let's say these are a certain voltage and no matter how big, how high you turn this one up, these ones are always louder. If you wanna double the signal from this, put a 47K resistor here because that's half as big. So it in essence doubles the voltage that goes in. So. That's a quick hack if your volumes uh, in this kind of instance aren't completely matching up. So this wire is another input. Going to leave it hanging because we're going to add a noise to here. So let's go and find a noise schematic. For the noise, we're going to go very simple. This is a little bit of a crop of the uh, Twinty Drummer uh, Cosmo module. The, the whole schematic and stuff is available on uh, my website as well, so you can check that out. But this is just a little zoom in on the noise. All the noise is, is this 2 and 3 904, this capacitor and this resistor. With any luck, we'll be able to get away with just using these three components and wiring it into the mixer without having to buffer it. That's my theory anyway. Did I say transistor at the start? So we've got a 2 and 3 904. It's a nice common uh, transistor. If you search up 2 and 3 904, you'll find thousands of links of where to buy one. One mega ohm resistor and a 4.7 nanofarad 472 is the code. Right, so what we're gonna do, 
is uh, the legs go um, from the front with the numbers, uh, it goes one, two, three. So this third leg isn't wired in. So we're gonna just um, plonk this down here. Right, and then we get a one mega ohm resistor. Uh, yeah, resistor, I'm, I'm not going mad. And wire that via plus 12 over to the first leg of the transistor, which is here. 4.7 nanofarad capacitor and have that going also to pin one, going to another row on the breadboard. And then we get a bit of wire and wire uh, leg two straight to ground, to ground. So with any luck, um, we might be able to uh, hear this. So yeah, you can see there is a noise there. It's very low, but there's noise. We're gonna wire it to the, the output of the module, which is here. We're gonna wire the output of the noise. So we're gonna try this anyway. So you can hear the noise is there. It's just very low. So I ended up having a little bit of a fiddle around and adding one more operational amplifier because I found that there was a little bit of background noise. The noise needed to be amplified before it went along any kind of wires or anything because that would cause hum and noises to, to come to ensue. So I had to use an op amp to boost the signal before it went into the volume to go into the mixing circuit. So what I ended up basically doing was, if I could find a pen, is the noise circuit on its own. And then this is the output. Ignore all this, ignore all of this. It ended up going via a 1K resistor into the non-inverting input of an op amp via a 1K and then via a 100K to the output of the op amp, which ends up boosting this by a hundred times because this is very low level. So if you send it over a bunch of wire and then back in, it's gonna pick up a bunch of noise. So this needs to be done really close. And then the non-inverting input of the amplifier, that goes to ground. The next thing we need to do is track these. We may as well do that now before jumping onto the next part. So this is gonna involve finding a flat point screwdriver. Well, actually, even before this, we need to actually add uh, an input, a voltage input into this. So we need to get a few more 100K resistors. So with the CEM3340, you, uh, pin 15 is what the voltage input is. You can add as many inputs into it as you'd really like, to be honest. All you need to do, Grab a hundred K, plug another hundred K into it. Put it in there. And you've got yourself a CV input. We're gonna do the same for the other one as well. Just gonna have that going from that hundred K resistor over to the input of uh, one of the jack sockets. And that jack socket actually connects over to this B-Step Pro. So I'm gonna use this to tune it. I know the B-Step Pro is calibrated to, well, pretty much a volt per octave. You can hear. Oh, basically what we need to do is make uh, the octaves, octaves, and then the rest of it kind of will work with it. So what I usually do first, uh, if, I've, if you've got a BeatStep Pro, the best way of doing this, writing a sequence that is basically a bunch of octaves. And then we've just got to make these octaves. I'm gonna get a tuner app on my phone. It's not about tuning bang to the middle, it's about being off the uh, note equally. So that's as close enough, we're sort of there. So now if we turn it up.
So you just need to sum them together, so you could just wire two wires into him, and then... Uh, the next thing that I want to do is sort out the multi-function use of the second oscillator. The second oscillator, I'm planning on also using it as a low frequency oscillator. It oscillates, the oscillator oscillates, but a lower frequency than audio. So then that can modulate things and make things go woo woo woo. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna start getting the buffer back, the buffer schematic. We're gonna do this slightly differently. We're not gonna use this kind of buffer because this buffer, it doesn't um, invert it and it's easier to set the voltages and play with the voltages if we go for an inverting buffer, which is the same as in the DC mixer. So we get the uh, circuit from the DC mixer. Uh, we're basically gonna plug the um, output of the triangle wave of the chip into uh, one of these single mixing circuits uh, from the op amp. So the first thing that we need to do is get a 100k resistor. This is very similar to messing around with the voltages here with these 100k's in, and what we did with the uh, noise circuit, which we ended up only adding a 1k, which ended up making the signal 100 times as big as the other signals. We're gonna get that going in, out of the triangle wave. We're gonna plug that into the inverting input of the op amp. We've got a free op amp remember from the on this side of this one because we didn't end up plugging it in. We also need to wire the um, non-inverting input. We wire that to ground. Then we're gonna plug 100K from the inverting input into the output of the op amp. So in essence, we've made this part of the circuit again from the mixer, but we put it here. What this does is it actually inverts the signal, but if we listen uh, to the output of this, we're able to hear the triangle wave. <laughs> Here it's a lot smoother. What we're gonna do with this triangle wave is we're gonna use this triangle wave to modulate a bunch of things in the synth voice. We're gonna get another 100K variable resistor, a potentiometer. Get the glue, hot glue it on down. We're gonna use this knob as the amount that this oscillator is gonna make this one go up and down and up and down and up and down via the voltage coming out of this oscillator going into this oscillator. Uh, so we're gonna do the same as the mixer again where the input is on this side. So we get this wire and we go that and we wire this into the output of that op amp that we just made uh, as a buffer. And you'll, you'll figure out why we're gonna uh, be using this op amp buffer in a second. So we're gonna wire that to the output which is in this instance, pin seven. And we're gonna get this one, which is the central wire. This is the output. And we're gonna go and plug this into another output from pin 15 over here. So we have to get another 100K resistor. So this is basically mixing another source of voltage into the uh, voltage control aspect of the oscillator circuit. Uh, turn it on and see if this oscillator is gonna affect this oscillator. Turn up this one. So you'll notice that this uh, frequency is now modulating this uh, oscillator. So we have a bit of an issue uh, now. We've plugged this into here. You notice that when we turn the oscillation modulation up, you'll notice that the pitch goes down. The output of this triangle wave that we've got coming out of this oscillator runs between zero volts and five volts. Remember, we've plugged it into this inverting amplifier. Uh, what this has done is it's actually inverted it. So now it runs between zero volts and minus five volts. So what's happening is we're plugging an oscillator that's running really quickly into the voltage input of this oscillator. And when we're turning it up, it's spending a lot of time pulling it down to five volts. So that's making it go down in pitch 
um, more times than not. So you'll notice that that's because the modulation is going between nothing and minus five volts. What we need to do is we need to try and figure out a way of making this go, but instead of between naught and minus five volts, we need to go between um, plus 2.5 volts and minus 2.5 volts and run through zero. That means it spends half of its time above zero and half of its time below zero. Remember zero is its normal voltage, its normal oscillation, and because we're sending it between a load of times down here, it's giving you the kind of idea that it's going down in pitch. So we need to bring this voltage up, offset it, to be about 2.5 volts above it. So what we need to do is we need to um, basically add another voltage into this mixer on this op amp. Much like we did with the mixer here with the, off with the oscillators, you can figure the oscillators, these two oscillators, as voltages that are just getting mixed together. Uh, we're gonna get another 100K resistor like we did over here. We're gonna plug it into the input of this um, mixing uh, inverting op amp. We're gonna plug that in. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into the negative 12 volts, which is right here. Now listen to what happens. Oh. You'll notice now it's going up when we've done this. What we've in essence done, we've wired a, a 100K resistor from 12 volts to the input. What this has done is instead of it um, offsetting it that much, it's ended up off, the, here's zero it's ended up offsetting it by 12 volts. So originally it was at minus five volts. This is now offset it up to plus 12, is between seven volts and 12 volts now. Now, now the voltage, now the ramp is all the way up here. So now when we turn this on, it's actually making the voltage go up because it's actually sending uh, a higher voltage in. So a 100K resistor is uh, too small because we're sending too much voltage, which is offsetting the, uh, the ramp wave too much. So what we need to do is figure out the resistor value that we need to send into here. So ideally we need to offset this by 2.5 volts, which is halfway here, which ends up putting it in the middle. Um, so uh, right now it's offsetting 12 volts. So that is using 100K. If we use a 200K resistor, it's gonna reduce it to six volts. If we use a 400K resistor, it's gonna reduce it to three volts. What happens if we try a 470K resistor? Right, this might be an approximation. Uh, the FM kind of fashion might not do it very well, but we'll figure it out. 470K is going to minus uh, 12 volts. It's uh, much closer. Uh, obviously the FM's not quite right, but that's you're not really gonna get a solid FM like this. You're better off uh, trying to sync it and frequency modulate it at the same time to get a truly in tune item. So we're also gonna add a LFO mode to this oscillator. Uh, right now it's audio rate modulation. but we're also gonna make a different mode, which is gonna make this frequency much lower. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this capacitor right here. This is the timing capacitor. And we're gonna basically, if we listen to this, if we take this capacitor off, it's the capacitor that goes from pin 9, 10, 11. It goes from pin 11 to ground. We swap this one nanofarad with a 10 nanofarad. What that is in essence gonna do is gonna make this a very low frequency, hopefully. You know what? I'm gonna make it even bigger. I'm gonna go 47 nanofarad. Uh, capacitor. So let's unplug that. There we go. So 
So we're going to go for 47 nanofarads. So what we need to do now is we need to change the mode between these two capacitors. So how we're going to do that is we're going to go and get a switch. What we've got now are both capacitors uh, connected to either side of the switch. Uh, we're going to wire the black wire now to pin 11 and then both of the capacitors separately to ground. So we've put down two oscillators, a noise and a mixer to mix all of those together. You'll notice that there's only one waveform coming out of both of these. I think it's enough for a nice simple synth voice, but if you want to add to it, then by all means, please do so. In fact, it is encouraged to work on this and build on it and figure it out more. If you search up the data sheets for the Curtis chips, the CEM3340, it will somewhat give you an idea of how to add more functions to this. I've also done other projects in the past, and if you check on my website, Site. there's other things like super simple voltage controlled oscillators this, that one's got a square output as well and yeah if you really wanted to you could make it your own anyway the next thing we're going to do is add a low pass filter to this to really get it going wub 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 so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a filter on so we've got another bit of breadboard the first thing we're going to do is make the electricity get over there so let's get a ground connect the ground up jump the ground over to this side as well. So ground is accessible from both sides. Have the minus 12 volts jumping over. Okay, so now the power is connected to this piece of breadboard. What we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what to do with the filter. We're gonna go uh, to a, for a classic. Uh, we've got the data sheet here for a chip, which is called the LM13700 Dual Operational Transconductance Amplifiers. It's a Swiss army knife for synthesizers. Uh, this, the, the, the amount of modules that are surrounding operational transconductance amplifiers, primarily this one because it is quite abundant and it's got two in, a, in the same package. Uh, you've got voltage controlled amplifiers, you've got filters, you've got ring modulators, you've got, oh, I'm running out of ideas already. But the thing is with the act of having this as a voltage controlled resistor and stuff like that, you're able to use it for a lot of things in a synthesizer module and a synthesizer. So whenever you want to add voltage control to a certain aspect of a synth, using this is a very solid and accurate way of doing that. So there's a bunch of examples in the data sheet itself. Voltage controlled amplifier. We've got stereo volume control, which is basically two voltage controlled amplifiers in parallel. Um, amplitude modulator. Ring modulator, four quadrant multiplier. We've got all the things, a low pass and a high pass. Uh, the low pass, which is right here, uh, when you end up adding it to a two pole low pass, which you end up using both of the sides of the LM13700 to make a filter and also a state variable filter. There's a lot of uh, popular filter designs around based on this chip. And if you look at any of them, for instance, the ones on this website, the ones on Schmidt's Bits, the ones on Music From Outer Space, to name a few, you'll notice that they're very similar to the datasheet ones, just in slightly different flavors here and there. My personal favorite one is the one that's in my synthesizer. It's the 1114 Filter Gur. It's where I uh, started off with the datasheet uh, design in a live stream and started designing it. And I, I kind of did the resonance a little bit wrong and it meant that it started way, uh, turning into a wave folding, wave shaping item. And it's also got voltage controlled resonance and stuff. And as you can see, it's quite a complicated uh, synthesizer module. Uh, there's links to this uh, below. It's on the uh, lookmumnocomputer.com website. It's the 1114 filter gur. It's a pretty interesting filter in my opinion. So the later MS20 filter design was, uh, was on operational transconductance amplifiers. Around that time there was loads of magazine synthesizers that also had filters based on the operational transconductance amplifiers. The uh, Powertram Polysynth. There's a, there's a very popular DIY project by Schmitz Bits and um, uh, there's a there's there's a kind of variation of it right here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this MS20 style filter, which is very similar to the data sheet one. We're going to lay it out on here with a couple of differences. Main difference is the fact that there are a couple of operational amplifiers, this one and this one, that are used as uh, buffers in the circuit. Well, we can save ourselves from a few operational amplifiers because we've actually got inside the chip itself 
some Darlington transistors, these things right here, and these are buffers. So you could in essence go from the output of this filter into the buffer and then come out of the buffer and that kind of makes it work and you, instead of using separate op amps. So we're gonna take an LM13700 and pop it onto the circuit board. We're gonna pop it up here, put a 220 ohm resistor from pin four of the LM13700 and send that down to ground. So pin one, two, three, four. We're gonna get another 220 ohm resistor and we're gonna send it from pin three also to ground. We're gonna have a 20K resistor and we're gonna get that coming from uh, pin four, uh, which is the uh, non-inverting input of the uh, transconductance amplifier. We're gonna have that going up to its own row on the uh, breadboard up here. We're actually gonna wire the output of the mixer into there. So that's the input of the filter. Then we get the output of the LM13700 and we wire that straight into the input of the buffer. Uh, so the output is pin five and the input of the buffer is pin seven. Then we get a 10K resistor and we run that from the input again. So the input pin four over to the output of the buffer, which is actually the last pin over here. That's that side of the circuit. Then we get the output of the uh, buffer yet again. And then we wire that into the other side the in positive input, the non-inverting input of the transconductance amplifier. Get another couple of 220 ohm resistors. So we send uh, pin 13 and pin 14 down to ground via the 220 ohms again. And we take that from the output of the LM13700 on this side and send it to ground. So pin 12 on the capacitor, send that to ground. And we also send pin 12 into the buffer input on the chip. We get another 10K resistor and we send that from the input again, right over to the output, which is at the bottom, the buffer output, pin nine. Get another resistor and have that coming out of the buffer output as well, which is pin nine, into its own row. That's a 470 nanofarad. And that's the output of this filter. Of course, we still need to add the control voltage into this and also the power for it. So we're gonna wire in the power first. So uh, pin 11 is going to positive uh, 12 volts. Pin six, minus 12 volts. So we've now got power into it. Let's get the voltage controlled going into it. Let's get two 2N3906 two uh, transistors. Uh, so this is gonna be the same as on the funky filter. Uh, we're gonna wire this in to work like this. So uh, let's get the uh, first one and wire it in. So pin one connects. So we're gonna wire this, uh, it's facing this way. Plop it here. And we're also gonna face this one facing it but facing down so pin one uh, connects to pin one on both transistors there we go we're going to send the first one uh, pin three is going to go to ground the first transistor and the second one we're going to send pin two to ground we're going to make a little jumper over uh, over to its own set of rows for the voltage input of the filter so that is pin two of the first transistor Send it in over here. So we've got the voltage input of the circuit over here. We're gonna grab a 10K resistor. Send it from the uh, first, uh, from the two pins that are connecting of the transistors, the first pins of each of them, and send that to, to 12 volts. This is a voltage to current converter to make the transconductance op amp voltage controlled. Now we're gonna get the output, which is pin three of this voltage to current converter and plug it into the amp bias input of the first transconductance amplifier, as well as the amp bias input of the second transconductance amplifier. So we plug it into both of these in parallel. So it controls both of the transconductance amplifiers in this chip at the same time in the same manner. And in order to do that, we get some 10K resistors and we go from both of the pin one and pin 16 over to the same uh, row on the breadboard. In hindsight, I should have built this up here, but I haven't. So uh, I'm gonna get a wire that goes over to the bottom leg of this voltage to current converter. 
Now the next job is to wire a twisty knob that acts as a voltage divider to plug into this uh, converter right here. We're gonna get a 100K resistor and plug it from this wire, which is the inputs to this. And we're gonna put it, basically just plonk it here, get it going out somewhere. And then we're gonna get a 100K potentiometer and we're gonna wire three wires to it. This is gonna be the filter control knob, so let's glue it down where the filter control knob needs to go. Right bloody here. The first thing that we're gonna do is wire both of the outside knobs, uh, this one to minus 12 volts and this one to plus 12 volts. Now what happens is if you twist the knob all the way to this side, this the output of this uh, wire is gonna be 12 volts. If you twist it all the way to this way, it's gonna be minus 12 volts. And when you twist it along, it's gonna be everything in between. For instance, in the middle, it's actually gonna be zero volts. And then you go over here, it'll be like six volts. You go over here, it'll be minus six volts. So you get everything in between. It acts as a voltage divider. It divides between it all. We're gonna wire this wire over to that input over here onto the voltage to current converter for the filter and wire that into that 100k resistor that we put there. Now in theory if we wire this to the output which is the end of this 470 nanofarad capacitor here into the input of the uh, speaker we might be able to hear something. We can hear it's filtering, but we've also got this knob here, which is gonna be a resonance filter. What a resonance filter is, is you can sort of think of it like putting a microphone up against a speaker. It starts feeding back on itself. So we literally get the output of the filter and we basically wire it back into itself uh, to add a bit of resonance to the tone. So in order to do that, we need to get a buffer chip. This is another op amp. We're gonna wire uh, the uh, voltages to this op amp again. So this is a TLO72, the same as these ones. So we need to put 12 volts onto pin eight and we get pin four over to minus 12. What we do is we get the outside leg of this and we use this as a volume knob. We get the output of the filter. We basically wire it into here and use this as a volume, much like these mixer knobs right here. Then we get the middle leg First, let's try and literally use this like the buffers over here. Plug this into pin number three, which is the non-inverting input of the op amp. We get a uh, wire and connect pin two and pin one, uh, which is the output and the inverting buffer together. And then we wire it via a one nanofarad capacitor over two, halfway through the filter. Uh, we go here, which is pin five. So now we've got it going back into itself. You can sort of hear. There is a slight amount of resonance. The issue that we have is the resonance isn't very loud. We need to make the resonance louder. So we need to add another couple of resistors into this buffer amplifier circuit, kind of boost its signal. So we need to remove the wire that goes between the non-inverting input and the output and add a resistor into there. We're gonna add a 100K resistor between the uh, non-inverting input and the output of the op amp, which is pin one and two. And then we're gonna mess around with the resistor value that goes between pin two and ground. And this will let us adjust the amount of feedback going back into the circuit. We're gonna start with something like 20K, so. Which is far too much. Try and go down to 10K. Which is way too much. We're gonna try 100K. But we're gonna try and go down a little bit to 82K, which would, should make it a little bit louder. But not too much. So now.
Now we've got the filter working. We're gonna add modulation. We've had the modulation from the low frequency oscillator that is this oscillator, uh, modulate this first oscillator. We're also gonna make this low frequency oscillator modulate the filter. We're gonna get another potentiometer, which is another 100K. We're gonna add another couple of wires and it's gonna be wired up exactly the same way as the other potentiometers that we've added on before. Squid some on there, stick it down right here. So this is gonna be the modulation. We get the black wire. This is the one that's gonna to go to ground. Obviously this is when it's at zero, it sends it to ground. Wire that into the ground rail on the breadboard. Yeah, again, we're gonna wire this wire, which is the end one. That's gonna wire into the input of it. So the input of this is going to be wired into the same bit that is wired to this knob that's controlling the modulation for that. So you just wire it in parallel, which is the output of this op amp right here. And then we're gonna get this wire, the central leg. This is the output as usual. We're gonna wire it into the voltage to current converter circuit of the filter, which are these two transistors here, and wire in another 100K into that rail. So we've got the, the knob for the actual filter. And we've got another 100K, which is gonna be the modulation that mixes in with that voltage there. Put that on another breadboard line. Gonna bring that over, along, doop do do like so, plug it in, and with any luck, it's going to let us, uh, if we turn this up, the one thing I've noticed is uh, it's not actually modulating it that much. What we're going to do is we're going to increase uh, this resistor because it's only uh, five volts. Uh, so we're gonna go for a smaller resistor. Uh, we're gonna go for half the value of 100K. We're gonna use a 47K. That in essence doubles that voltage. So when it's on max, it's uh, twice as, you know, mod modulatory. So let's uh, plug a 47K in instead of 100K. Like so. Now turn this up. The resonance steps and somewhat wave falls in a way that I think is slightly different to other modules and it's partially down to the fact that it's a little bit badly designed but I think that adds to the flavour. It's nearly as simple as I could make it. By the way, if you wanted to make a filter without resonance and really simplify it, you could literally just use one side of this circuit, making sure that from the operational transconductance amplifier output, you've got the capacitor going to ground and that this will be a single pole, a one pole filter. So if you just build one side, you've got a one pole low pass filter anyway. Anyway, the next thing we need to add to this is an envelope generator to make it respond more like a classic synthesizer voice. So the next thing we're gonna make is the envelope generator circuit. This is the part of the circuit that when you tell it to play, when you tell the synthesizer to play, it will play for as long as that, that designated amount of time. Um, you can get many different types of envelope generators. Uh, you've got attack, if you've heard of that, decay, sustain, release. A while back I did this uh, simple one. It's a super simple attack, release, bare bones. Well, we're actually gonna go even more bare bones than this because this is gonna be a groove box type synthesizer. So the plan is, is this is going into a machine that doesn't have a variable lengths of gate going into it. What I mean by that is it's gonna go from a sequencer that is gonna be sequencing do 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 the gate length be very short, which means that if you only send a tiny length, so make sound, make sound, the attack part of the synthesizer, the bit that, that will slowly bring the synthesizer up to volume, for instance, well, that is completely useless in the setting that we're gonna make it. It's gonna be very similar to the 303 synthesizer, which is a groove box as well. You'll notice it only has decay, uh, which is also, uh, I think you could argue it is release in this instance. So what we need is we're gonna start with another operational amplifier. Just add another TL072. So we've got the TL072. We're gonna avoid this melted part. 
First, the same as usual, we're gonna power it with uh, plus and minus 12 volts. So plus 12 volts to pin eight as usual. And pin four goes to minus 12 volts. There we go, lovely jubbly. Uh, the funny thing is, is this circuit is very similar to other circuits inside the synthesizer. It's got the most in common with something called a slide, a portamento. That means you'll take a voltage from one part and take it over to another voltage and adjust the speed at which it slides down to it. If there's zero slide, it will just go dum, dum, dum. Uh, if you add a bit of slide, it will slowly dive down to it, or if it's going up, it will slowly ride up. Uh, and this is actually doing exactly that. However, it's doing it with a very uniform voltage to start with. The first thing that we need to make is something called a comparator. Comparator, comparator, comparator. It's something that compares a voltage. Uh, what you do is you send a voltage into it, and if that voltage is high enough, it will send a voltage out of it. If the voltage isn't high enough, it just won't send anything out on its output. So let's say uh, the comparator, 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 whatever you, however you want to pronounce it. There's a lot of people who say comparator, comparator. I think comparator sounds cooler. Yeah, I'm sure people will say you can't call it like that, but yeah, but bite me. So what it's going to do is uh, if the comparator, 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 comparator uh, is uh, set to six volts. If there's a voltage going in that's below six volts, it won't listen to it. If it's above six volts, it will listen to it and it will send out a voltage. So that's how the first part of this circuit is gonna work. So we're gonna get a 100K resistor and we're gonna put it on its own row on the, on the breadboard, like right here. And we're gonna plug that into pin three of the Tillo's TLO72, which is a non-inverting input of the op amp. This is the input for the envelope generator. We're also going to wire a 100k resistor coming from this uh, down to ground. This will stop like ghost voltages happening then there and it's sending it off on its own willy-nilly accord. We're going to set the comparator to around three or four volts or something like that. That means if the voltage goes over three or four volts, it's going to turn the envelope generator on. How we're going to do that is uh, with pin two on the operational amplifier, we're going to make a voltage divider going into that. Uh, we're going to put a 47K resistor and wire it to plus 12 volts and we're going to put it onto pin two right there. Then we're going to get a 10K resistor. 10K is pretty much a fifth of a 47K. Imagine 47K is 50K. Uh, well, that we're going to wire it into the same pin as well. What that is going to do is it's going to divide the voltage going into that pin. So that voltage is going to become a fifth of whatever is going through that 47K and a fifth of 12 volts is 2.4. So that means that this comparator is set to 2.4 volts. So if we send a trigger into it from something like a BeatStep Pro, it's going to turn on the envelope generator as long as that trigger is above 2.4 volts and most synthesizer trigger thing things and stuff run over that so it's fine it's it's gonna work actually to quickly demonstrate this let's wire an led to the output of this op amp so we'll get the output of the uh, op amp plugged into an led and then wire the led via i don't know a 1k resistor uh, just to stop it burning out uh, to ground ho 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 we wire the input of the envelope generator which is pin free again oh you'll see my fingers are setting it off a little bit so maybe we need to readjust it a little bit it's now wired into the gate output of the BeatStep Pro, so that's going in here. We've wired this comparator into it, and yeah, that's turning on and off. So we've got a voltage going in. So all we have in essence is a buffered voltage, but we're getting that. Right, we'll move this LED off. We'll take that, my eyes are hurting now. That was a bright LED. Now we're gonna wire this one mega ohm potentiometer I've just glued down into the comparator. Uh, you'll notice that this is the only potentiometer so far that isn't a 100K. Uh, we've wired two wires into it, one from the first leg and one from the second leg. What we're gonna do, just to show you what this does, we're gonna wire both of these, we're going to wire one of the legs, doesn't matter which way around, to the output of the comparator. And then we're going to use another op amp, this side of the TLO72. We're going to use this as a buffer after the uh, knob that's going to act like the time for the decay or for the release and stuff. We're going to use it as simply a buffer, so we're going to wire it exactly the same as the ones that were buffering over here. So we get the output and the inverting input of the op amp and wire those together if it doesn't just pop out all the time with this little jumper cable. Then we're going to wire the other wire from this potentiometer into 
the non-inverting input of the op amp. Then we're going to get this LED again. We're going to wire the long leg, the positive side, to the output of this op amp, which is becoming a buffer. We're going to use a 1K resistor just to protect the LED from burning out. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to hit the key. See the LEDs lighting up again. And if we adjust this potential amount, it doesn't make a difference. But if we get this one microfarad, one UF capacitor, this one, it doesn't really matter, but this one in this instance is an electrolytic. Uh, wire the long leg if it's an electrolytic. To the input of the op amp that's being the buffer, we wire the short leg to ground. Because this little pocket of electronics is being buffered by the operational amplifier that we just plugged in, uh, it means that the electricity is going to be pulled away much slower because it's got a high impedance. That means that this capacitor is going to somewhat act like a bit of a battery and store the electricity. So if we start turning this up, you'll see that it starts turning on and off a lot slower. You'll see it's slowing down. Oh, it's going up, it's going down. We're going to slow it down and it's going to speed up again. So there we go. We've got a bit of an up and a down. It's acting somewhat like a slide on a synthesizer. In this instance, with this envelope generator, it isn't very helpful that the up and the down are all being controlled by a single knob. In order to split this up, we need to use a couple of diodes. We're going to get one diode and we're going to wire it to the output of this comparator circuit right here. And the black stripe on the diode is facing away, it's pointing upwards. We're going to wire this one into the input of that buffer. So that means it's going to let electricity run that way. But we're also going to wire another diode that's pointing the opposite way. So the black stripe on the diode is going to face the output of the comparator. And we're going to unplug this potentiometer from the output of the comparator. And we're going to wire this one to this side of that diode. This has in essence split up the rise and the fall of the circuit. Now when we send a gate out from the BeatStep Pro uh, and we turn up the release knob right here, you'll notice that the rise isn't being affected, but it's just taking a longer time to turn off and release, release. If you want to also be able to separately control the rise, the attack of the envelope generator, all you need to do is wire another one mega ohm potentiometer uh, between this diode that's going straight over there and the buffer of the operational amplifier. But we only need a release for this synthesizer, so we got one. We got one right there. So now we have a working envelope generator. All we need to do is wire that into the parts of the synthesizer that we want it to control. Currently, so far, we only need it to control two things. That is the pitch of this oscillator. And also the envelope generator. Uh, we have voltage control on both of these, if you remember from earlier on in the video. The control voltage input for the oscillator is over here, and the control voltage input for the filter is over here. We're going to start by wiring the voltage input of the filter into the output of the envelope generator. We're going to get a 100k resistor, another 100k resistor. Wire that into the voltage input of the filter circuit. Just going to quickly see if it works by wiring that straight into the output of the envelope generator. Trigger it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, it could control it more. So we're going to remove this 100K resistor and swap it with a smaller resistor. We're going to go for a 47K resistor. There we go. If you find that you get to the end of the release knob and you find it's not releasing for long enough, you can simply just swap the capacitor that is in the envelope generator circuit for a bigger one. So now we've got a 10 microfarad instead of a one microfarad. This is gonna be really long. Just remember the larger the capacitor, it really hampers the fine tuning of the shorter release times. We're gonna go halfway and try a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. I 
I think that's a good middle ground. There's nothing stopping you adding a switch to switch between capacitors if you so wish. Now we're gonna get another 100K potentiometer and we're gonna use this to control the level at which the envelope generator affects the filter. This potentiometer is wired in exactly the same way as the other voltage dividing ones like the level that this is affecting that and stuff. So we've got ground on this side, the input on this side and the output in the middle. We're gonna hot glue this one down as usual. Gonna stick it right here. So this is the row for the filter. We're gonna start by putting this leg as usual into ground. We're gonna wire the middle leg into the input of the filter circuit. And we're gonna wire this side of this knob, which is an effect acting as an attenuator. This is gonna be the input. We're gonna wire that into the output of the envelope generator. So now we'll be able to control the level at which it affects the filter. Because it acts, because this, because this knob acts like a release, we can adjust the amount of gate time that goes into it to make it sound a bit more varied and a bit different. So right now. But if we adjust the gate lengths coming out of the B-Set Pro, it sounds pretty funky. With the envelope generator there is one last thing we are going to wire in for this synthesizer and that is a level input for the oscillator to control how much the oscillator is going to be affected by the envelope generator. So the same as usual we're going to use another 100k potentiometer. We're going to hot glue down as well and because it's affecting the oscillator, we're gonna stick it down here. Same as usual, first leg onto the ground. Third leg over to the output of the envelope generator. And the second leg, the wire is gonna to go to the input of the oscillator, the 15th pin, remember, there's, a, there's an oscillator voltage input mixer there. We're gonna wire another 100K into that if we can fit it in. Getting very busy up there, but we're gonna wire this into it as well. So this voltage is gonna get mixed in with the rest of them. Well, let's give it a go. One slight addition to this circuit, if you notice, um, when I turn up the envelope generator, the, the filter actually goes down a bit. The bottom of the envelope generator is a little bit below zero. It seems to be pulling some of the voltage out. Like, listen. We don't want that because these shouldn't really affect the sound. These knobs shouldn't affect the sound unless the envelope generator is being triggered. Uh, it's a pretty easy fix. Uh, all we need to do is uh, the output of the envelope generator. We're just going to unplug the wires that are going over to the knobs. We're going to get another diode, which in essence makes it a one-way street. That means uh, it's only going to send voltage out. If there's a negative voltage, that isn't going to affect this because it's going to be pulling. It's not going to be any more because we've got a one-way street on the go. We've got a diode. Put it onto its own row on the breadboard and hopefully now if we plug these in Yeah, of course this is a very, very simple envelope generator and there's also nothing stopping you making two to control the uh, oscillator and the filter separately. All you have to do is wire the input to both of the envelope generators in parallel and it will just act as two separate envelope generators that are being triggered 
by the same input trigger source. Now to finish off this synth voice, we need to add a VCA, voltage controlled amplifier. This acts as a voltage controlled volume knob so we can turn the volume off and have the filter up on loud and still uh, be able to control it like a normal synthesizer. You'll notice that when we turn up the oscillator without any input into it, the synthesizer just turns on and in some instances we don't want that to happen. In some instances we want these settings to be anything but it not to make any noise until we tell it to make noise. What we need to build now is a voltage controlled amplifier. What a voltage controlled amplifier is, is a voltage controlled volume knob. You send voltage into it, it turns the volume up. This circuit is actually very similar to one side of the filter. It's just without the capacitor, so it isn't messing around with the frequencies. It's merely messing around with the levels and the voltage. I've got a printout here of this VCA that I use in certain modules when I want to add control voltage to something in a module. I'll start by getting this circuit and then modifying it to the use that I need it for. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this circuit and put it down here. Like I said, it's a very similar circuit to the filter. So we're going to start with an LM13700 operational transconductance amplifier. First thing we're going to do is we're going to wire up this chip to the power. So pin 11 goes to 12 volts and pin 6 goes to minus 12 volts. I'm going to start by just plopping this circuit onto the breadboard. There's a 100 nanofarad capacitor that then goes into a 10k resistor which goes into pin 3 of the LM13700. We're going to get a 220 ohm resistor, wire it to ground from that same pin, pin 3. Another 220 ohm resistor going from pin 4. Then going to the output of the operational transconductance amplifier, we've got a 47k going to ground. The output connects straight to the Darlington transistor buffer that is inside of here. So we've got pin 5 going to pin 7 into the buffer input. Then the output of the transistor buffer, which is pin 8, uh, has a 10k resistor going to minus 12 volt. Then we've got a 1 microfarad capacitor coming from the output, which is pin 8, going to its own rail, which is going to be the output of the VCA. Now we've got this circuit, which is very similar, just slightly different to this circuit up here for the voltage input of the voltage controlled amplifier. So we get another TL072 wired in down here. Start by wiring it up to the power, which is pin 8 on 12 volts and pin 4 on minus 12 volts. We're going to get a 100k resistor going into the input of this circuit. This is going to be the control voltage input. So we wire 100k to pin 2 of the operational amplifier. Wire it up to its own rail on the breadboard. Wire pin 3 of the op amp to ground. Get a diode coming from pin 1 to pin 2. This diode prevents negative voltages damaging the transistor. Because we don't need a volume knob for this VCO, we're not going to bother adding this bit. We're going to get a 2N3906 transistor. The middle leg of the transistor, pin 2, goes to pin 1 of the op amp. The first leg uh, goes to pin 2, so it sits nicely right there. Then the output, pin 3 of the transistor, wires into pin 1 of the operational transconductance amplifier via a 10K resistor. Like so. Now this circuit in theory should act like a voltage controlled volume knob. Now we're going to find the output of this. It is connected to the output of the filter. Unplug that from the filter. Get a wire coming from the output of the filter. Wire it to the input of the VCA, voltage controlled amplifier. And then plug the output to the output of the VCA, the voltage controlled amplifier, which is right, right there. Um, now with any luck, you're not going to hear anything. Nope, you don't hear anything. If we plug the input of the VCA to 12 volts, hopefully you'll start hearing something. Okay, so yeah, it's working. So what we need to do now is wire the input of the VCA, basically, to the output of the envelope generator, which is right up here. That means the output of the envelope generator is going to control the volume knob, which is over here, turning on and off. With any luck, we'll get away with just a wire wiring from the output of the envelope generator into the input of the VCA. Sounds all right so far, let's give it a go. Yeah, there we go, there's, there's the VCA, sorted. Actually, there's one final thing I want to add to this bare bones synthesizer voice, and that is a switch uh, that turns on the VCA. Because right now, the VCA is not letting through anything unless you get a gate that turns on the envelope generator. So I'm going to get this switch, which in essence bypasses the VCA. That means it can be a standalone funky noise generator as well. 
Uh, I've got two wires here that are uh, wired in uh, to the switch. What we're going to do is we're going to wire a 100k resistor um, to the uh, VCA control voltage input that is also plugged into the envelope generator. And we're going to wire this into that. And then we're also going to wire the other side of the switch to 12 volts. So it in essence sends 12 volts into the VCA, which puts it on maximum volume. So let's get a bit of hot glue. Uh, one of the wires from the switch to plus 12 volts. Wire the other wire over to that 100K that we just plopped in. Yeah. Sorted. So there we go, it's pretty much done. I decided to omit the mixer that was coming from the oscillators and going into the filter. The reason why is because the filter has a high enough impedance to mix it itself. So we could cut out a couple more op amps from this design. I've left the three mixing resistors coming from the various outputs of the audio. So we've got the mixer of the first oscillator, the mixer of the second oscillator and a mixer under the noise that was originally going into the inverting input of the op amp, we're just gonna now, instead of plugging it into the inverting input of the op amp, we're gonna plug it straight to the wire that goes to the filter. Okay, so we've got. This is a schematic. It's a little bit rough around the edges and it certainly needs a little bit more work to neaten it up. I'm going to be doing that because I'm gonna try and build this into its own circuit board and yeah, just to have it as a nice, easy to go to synth voice. But that is after I add a couple more things here and there. But I think it's enough to answer a few questions and give you the confidence to hopefully try this yourself. Anyway, let's give it a test and see what sounds we can get out of it. So let's have a go and see what sounds we can make out of this then.
Yeah, that's the super simple breadboarded synth voice. I'm pretty happy with this, it's quite nice. There's obviously a lot of things you could do to improve this and I encourage you to do so. But if you only wanna build little aspects of this, you can also do that as well. The thing about breadboarding and breadboard prototyping is you could do literally anything. You could chop and change bits here or there and everywhere. Like I said, I'm gonna be adding to this and I'm gonna be putting more videos over on Patreon as and when I add parts to it. And you can watch a load of other building videos and live streams and downloads of songs and stuff like that over there as well. Needless to say, Patreon helps support these projects to make it possible to keep uploading these projects as frequently as they come out. Anyway, that's it from me, Look Mum No Computer, and the super simple synth voice. And yeah, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and remember, don't be scared, don't be scared to try it. Do not be scared to try it. See you later.